What is up, YouTube? Before you watch this video, which by the way, probably my favorite video I've released in the past couple of years. I'm so excited for you guys to watch it. But as I edit this video, I just wanted to interrupt and tell you guys to please subscribe to my channel. That helps me out a ton. Give this video a thumbs up and give it a positive comment. It goes such a long way and it means so much to me, you guys, and it costs nothing to you. So thanks for doing that. And then before we get into this video, I just wanted to tell you one thing. I don't want to necessarily apologize for it. I just want to kind of tell you how I film my hunting videos. They are self-filmed. I'm out there, I'm by myself, and I'm putting hunting first and shooting a video second. So because of that, in the beginning here, there's going to be some voiceovers. There's going to be some film of going like this way, just me snapping a quick little story on my Instagram real quick. But it's all part of the story. It all pieces together. And like I said, the only reason it is like that is because I'm out there by myself hunting really hard and... You know, maybe someday I have someone out there filming my hunts all the time and that would be awesome. But for right now, self-filmed, solo hunt. So just keep that in mind as you're watching the video. The beginning of this video is very informative and I'm just dumping all this information on you because I want you to be able to see start to finish of my hunt, what goes on behind the scenes, just so you guys can have the full story as I shoot my awesome buck. So that's all you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Well folks, 2020 was a wild one for everyone. I started out with the best shed season I ever had, moved right into fishing. I guided my clients for my fly fishing guide services, Chunky Trout Outfitters, and that was awesome. And then it was time to get serious about deer hunting. In 2020, I got a general season Utah archery deer tag in a unit that I had never hunted before. I put in for this unit as my second choice and I never expected to draw it, but sure enough, I did. So one of the things that helped me get to learn this unit and understand where the deer went is I went out, as you can see here in this video, after it rained. Every single time after it rained, I went out into the desert to look for fresh tracks. And unfortunately, rain is very rare in the desert, but it gave me a good clue as to where the bucks were going and I patterned them accordingly. I used the intel from my hikes to set trail cameras and eventually get numerous really good bucks, shooter bucks on my camera. I'd say there was for sure three solid bucks that I would shoot and I had them all on my camera by end of July. So getting right into prime time, the season opener was mid-August. So this location here ended up being where I set my first trail camera and ended up being where I set my blind, so pretty cool. I put the camera on the edge of this wash facing towards the red sand where I had patterned the bucks and I ended up getting all different good shooter bucks ranging from 15 to 55 yards from where I would put a blind in the comfort in the shelter here of the wash and all the vegetation to easily conceal me. And getting to this area where I had the cameras and the blind ended up being a 2.5 mile hike from where I could park my truck. So definitely the most long distance blind hunting I've ever done, which meant for lots of hikes in there, checking cameras, eventually took the blind in there, machete, set the blind, set up some fence posts for the trail cameras, and voila, we have a hunting blind. Look how windy it is out here, you guys. It was always, always this windy. So this was the blind I spent the most time in. I ended up hunting two different blinds, but as you can see this one here, what's cool about it is I can shoot facing outwards from the blind here where I've patterned the bucks, where like I said, they were about 15 to 55 yards away, but also it does have 360 windows. And in the back there towards the wash that I'm hunting in, there's tons of deer trails and there's green vegetation, there's water. So this entire time I'm hunting this wash system that you see here. You have a little bit of red sand where the deer can cross through and they're moving to and from their bedding areas. And then you have this green vegetation that has water, shelter, it's a really comfortable place for the deer to hang out. And I was really excited about this blind overall. Being so far back on the public land, two and a half miles, it's a long walk for hunting deer. You know, usually the deer stay in pretty mild, 
pretty close to the truck terrain, so it definitely was a challenge and something I've never done before. With it being so far back in there, I had so much fun hiking in there almost every day as we got closer to my hunt. The summer scouting was definitely a lot of fun. I was shooting my bow every single day and I was more dialed than I've ever been, honestly, and I owe that to the Bomar Archery nose button. I highly recommend it. So the three different shooter bucks were hitting my camera really good every day around 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. the week before opening day. And then sure enough, like the day before opening day hit, the temperatures jumped up to 110 degrees and the bucks went full on nocturnal. Check this out, you guys, this beautiful blow snake. You can see my footsteps right there. I'm walking through the sage and all of a sudden, whoa, <laughs> I ran backwards for a second. I wasn't sure if it was a rattlesnake and then I checked it out. It wasn't, it didn't rattle at me and I got that close, but <laughs> still always a surprise when you see like a big old snake like that and you're not expecting it. He's beautiful. I actually love snakes, as long as they're not rattlesnakes. I hate rattlesnakes. Love snakes like that guy. <laughs> so because the bucks went fully nocturnal, I decided that I would hike up, up the mountain to the glassing point, and I would watch and see if I could figure out where the bucks were at and when they were coming out. And some nights they would come out right before last light, but they were just too far away to hunt. It was really, really hot, you guys. I'm talking 100 plus degrees every day. And even though the bucks weren't coming out, these does here were coming out every day. They were just 20 yards from my blind, which was a really awesome sign. I figured one of these days the buck would make a mistake and walk by my blind. What's up, guys? I am one of those unique archery hunters where I like to carry everything on my person at all times. I stash stuff in my blind for sure, but check it out. I have all, everything I need right here to shoot a buck. And I always have stuff in my back pocket. <laughs> you can see it. Back in the Sahara Desert, you guys. Let's see if I can find myself a buck. So day four of the hunt was one of the most exciting. I had spotted these bucks and put a stalk on them. I ended up following their tracks for a while. Long story short, I ended up bumping them at 35 yards, but it was a pretty fun day. And you can see here on the Scout to Hunt app my path that I took and where I bumped them. The days were seriously so hot, you guys. I would take these little midday breaks from the blind or from spotting and stalking and get in this little mountain spring here. It was so cold, but it felt so good. The bucks have shifted down the wash a little bit by this point, probably fifth or sixth day of the hunt, and I moved to the other blind that was just down the wash. You can see here my little setup. I like to sit on the ground because it's quiet, have my tripod, and right away I started seeing more bucks. So we are now on day nine of the hunt and day nine of sitting in two different blinds and doing some different failed spot and stock attempts. And it is August 24th, which is my lucky day because three years ago to the day I shot my biggest buck ever, my 177 inch mule deer with my bow, solo hunting on public land. And I just had a feeling that maybe, just maybe August 24th could be my day again. And boy, was I right. big buck down you guys I am so excited it was crazy but I'm so happy I have spent nine ten days in a blind crazy 
probably hundreds of hours by now, hundreds of miles of hiking, so much time setting trail cameras and all these crazy things, and a buck is finally down. I can't wait to show you guys. I just have to interrupt really, really quick to tell you about that shot uh, because I was all business in the moment. I was shocked at what I just experienced. I'm not going to talk about it like crazy. The shot was a little high, but I just have to say how absolutely insane is it that that animal dumped like that with a bow so close right in front of my blind and then like never moved. Like he crawled and then he died. That is so crazy to me for that to happen with an arrow right in front of me. I've never seen that happen before. And it still blows my mind, you know, because I'm not shooting like 80, 90 pounds. I have a smaller draw weight, a smaller um, draw length. And that was something I absolutely never expected. I kind of panicked. I didn't know what to do. He was right there in front of me. And then he went and everything is good. But it was such a wild experience. I really want you guys to comment below if you've ever seen that happen before. And if you haven't, how crazy is it that that animal never ran with a shot with an arrow? How freaking crazy is that? Tell me. Okay, okay, back to the video. Right, guys it's getting dark let's give you a good look at him real quick he's such a beautiful buck look at him dang may have to back my camera up a little bit <laughs> he's so dang cool he's super wide maybe like 26 27 <laughs> He's so cool. <sighs> sweating from turning him over and everything by myself nonstop but I have his one side front quarter and back quarter totally off of him right now um, I'm just gonna finish caping him on this side get the, his front shoulder and hind quarter off then I'll take the neck meat the back straps the tenderloins all that get it all out of here it's gonna be a late night for sure for right now I'm just trying to cape him like that's the first priority <laughs> a lot of work by yourself in the dark. What's up guys? It's the next day obviously. It was a really really late night by the time getting the meat out of there, chopping all the meat up, sorry awful angle, um, showering, all of that, getting everything on ice, getting everything in the fridge. I put the meat right in the fridge last night and I put the velvet antlers and the cape right in front of the air conditioning. He's a wide buck he would not fit inside any of my freezers chickens 
Dickens. He was too wide. He wouldn't fit in any of my freezers or coolers. I dug this nice one out of my shed. I'm going to see if he'll fit in there now just to keep his velvet nice and cold. So let's go check that out. All right, so he was too wide for any of my coolers. He's a wide buck, so this is how I had to drive with him with a bag of ice on him and the air conditioner blasting on him in the front seat of my truck. I know a lot of people think this is gross, but if you ask your taxidermist, this is actually the best thing to do to maintain the velvet looking really good and preserving well as you get it to the taxidermist, especially in the summer heat. Well guys, if you watched to the end, I just want to say thank you so much for doing that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. That was such an awesome deer hunt. I'm so grateful to tag out. I was so grateful to have a tag. This is my favorite hunt in the world. Red sand, desert, velvet mule deer with my bow is my favorite hunt in the world. So I'm very blessed and very grateful to have taken an animal and filled my tag. Thanks for watching you guys. Hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next video.